Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and well, I'm reviewing one big honking tablet here, aren't I? Technically, this is not a tablet, though. Obviously, you can use it as such, and it's 18.4 inches. It's a big guy, but it's only a little over five pounds. And what is it? This is the Dell XPX 18, which really is an all-in-one PC. Comes with a little flip-out stand on the back or an auxiliary stand that you can use as well. And it's it's a really cool modern product. It bridges the gap between something that is a crazy big tablet and your all-in-one desktop PC. And we're going to look at it now. So this is the Dell XPS 18. Unlike other XPS models that are notebooks, clearly this is not a notebook. Set up like this, this is an all-in-one PC. As shown here, we have the $99 optional stand, which we'll take a look at in a minute, and you can plug the charger directly into that. Comes with this wireless keyboard and mouse. And now, for those of you who really like Dell keyboards, especially the XPS ones, it's amazing how much this feels and works like that. Whether you like that or not is up to you. I think Dell makes really nice keyboards. Though. By the way, actually, this is made by Logitech, as is the wireless mouse that it comes with as well. Your average adequate optical wireless mouse right here. You can see the charger is not very big. We've got it to scale here relative to these other accessories. Pretty much like a laptop, smaller laptop charger to medium size one, 65 watt hour charger. And well, it doesn't need a big charger because inside here, this is basically running on Ultrabook internals. The same ULV CPUs you would find on Ultrabooks inside of this. And that's what allows Dell to make tablet that's 18.4 inches running full windows, but it only weighs a little over five pounds, which is pretty darn amazing. As an all-in-one, obviously that is a big selling point. At a little over five pounds, you can pick it up out of the stand and carry it and put it where you want. Five pounds is about what your average laptop weighs these days, so it's really not that much of a burden. At 18.4 inches diagonal, it's gonna feel like you're carrying a big, well, tray table or something like that around the house, but the nice part is you just plop this anywhere you want, you stream some Netflix or whatever it is that you wanna watch, and you've got pretty much a nice old TV experience anyway, anywhere here. YouTube, you name it. Full Windows 8, 64-bit running on here. Ours is the, the mid-model. You can get it with a Core i3, i5, or i7. Ours is the 3337U. There's also, that's 1.8 gigahertz, by the way, dual core. There's also 1.7 gigahertz, not too much more money. It is an Ultrabook inside. That means it's perfectly adequate for doing your email, your web, your office, some Photoshop, and, and even some HD video editing. It's not a super duper heavy duty number cruncher. You're not going to really use this as a CAD workstation. It has Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics. It's not a serious gamer. Casual games are fine. All the games that you can find on the Metro store, for example, they'll run just fine on this, but this is not going to run Crisis 2. And Skyrim, you're going to have to run that low resolution and make do with 30 frames per second. So that's not the point of this. The point is that it is light. I can pick this up just like that. Not say, oh my God, it's murdering me. This is half the weight of the Sony Tab 20, which was pretty neat when it came out because it was 11 and a half pounds or so and fairly portable with a 20 inch display. So this guy right here, easy to carry around. That's the point of it. So basically if you have everyday computing needs more than adequate and super portable. If you don't want to spend the money for the stand that we'll look at in a minute, it comes with flap out little feet here. So you can stand it up kind of normal position like that. Or you can actually lay it flat on the table for a kind of reading mode. And I'll show you how that is. So here it is flipped this way. So it's kind of facing at you and I'll aim it at me so you get the idea. So this is a pretty comfortable way to use it if you want to interact with it on the table. It makes it pretty versatile. If we take a look at the back again, put our feet back. Soft touch, rubbery finish here, particularly has nice grippy points up here so you can hold onto it. Our ventilation is along the bottom edge right there. Doesn't get terribly hot. I, I, ULV CPUs don't get all that hot. And there's plenty of room here for heat dissipation and the CPU doesn't have to be right against the casing like it does on a super duper skinny Ultrabook. Got rubber feet on the back here and embedded on the flippy things right here. So you can actually lay it completely flat on the table if you wish to. This is our SD card slot right here. Also works with memory stick duo card slots. And on the side we have our ports. Right here, two USB 3.0 ports. There's the charging port. You can plug the charger directly into it there. We've got a headphone jack, combo headphone. Speaker grill right there, volume controls. And on the other side we have just the power button and another speaker grill. So not super duper port heavy here, again, sort of like an Ultrabook. If, if you need wired Ethernet, you're going to have to use a USB Ethernet adapter. It does have Wi-Fi built in. The base model has Intel wireless 
compatible with Wi-Di. It's single band 2.4 gigahertz, but it's dual stream for up to 300 megabit per second. And as an option, you can get Wi-Fi Killer and the gaming module. If for those of you who are into that, you're aware of fast throughput that you can get with that wireless adapter. It also has Bluetooth 4.0 high speed. And for those of you who are adventurous and want to open it up for upgrade, just torque screws holding the back on here so you can actually get inside, access that hard drive that's inside, the RAM slots, that kind of thing. Uh, as with any mobile style device, the, the CPU is going to be soldered on here in your GPU so you don't upgrade those things on like a full size desktop, but it's somewhat upgradable inside and that's a good thing. Now the bundle that we have is $1349. For that you get the Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM, 500 gig, 5400 RPM hard drive, a 32 gig SSD for caching, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Intel Wi-Fi on there, and you get the stand. Now you can get this any way you want. You can get it with or without the stand with different CPUs and all that kind of thing, but let's talk about the stand for a minute. It's a pretty nice addition. Obviously it kind of makes it much more like your average all-in-one. It's got a hinge like that, very nice and stiff. Pogo pin style charging connector right there that mates with the bottom of the XPS 18. Nice rubber over here. On the bottom here it's got rubber too so it won't scratch your table. It's also very grippy. It will not accidentally slide across the table. It does pick up a little schmutz and lint but no big deal there. This thing is heavy. This is several pounds. This is like good old American steel or something like that. Definitely strong enough to hold a five pound tablet and more. From the side view here, clean look. And the power connector is right in here. A little hard to see because we're looking at black on black, but basically just goes right in here, plugs it on the side. You can route your cable out the back hole right there. Holds it up. Fairly worthwhile accessory. I mean, the little flippy guys on the back of the tablet do the job, but this is nice and stable. It makes it easy to drop it in and charge. This is a magnetic pogo pin connector, and you will feel the magnetic pull, but that does not guarantee that it's actually going to line up for charging, I noticed. So sometimes you have to still fidget around. The world of pogo connections are not perfect yet. And there's a little LED that lights up white when it's docked in. And we've got it docked, and you can see the little white light is on. Got a webcam up here, reasonably decent. And you know, since this functions as a tablet too, you're thinking, well, what's it gonna last for? An hour and a half? We're used to gaming notebooks because those are large and they don't last very long. This guy, since it's running an Ultrabook internals and it's, since it's large, it has room for an eight cell battery. It actually goes about four and a half hours on a charge, just undocked, unplugged from power. Pretty darn amazing. So it actually is useful. This is something you could carry into the den just to watch a TV show or surf for a while, not worry about powering it up. It's got a full HD 1920 by 1080 IPS display, wide viewing angles, very nice color saturation. Oh, almost 300 nits of brightness here. Now you're going to have to disable Windows Auto Brightness. This is just, uh, we say this again and again with Windows APCs, Auto Brightness for indoor use is just murderous. It wants to run things really dim. So you just go into your general settings and charms right here and you'll see an option for Auto Brightness. And then besides that, you might have to go into your power plan settings, and I'll show you how to do that since this is just a constant problem for folks. Go to more power options, change plan settings, go to change advanced, and then when you scroll down to display over here you'll see even more Intel adaptive brightness settings. If you turn those off you'll get absolute maximum brightness. So for those of you who really need super duper bright, there it is, that's how you do it. That said, I found that just disabling Windows Auto Brightness and the charms was sufficient. I didn't want to display, disable the adaptive brightness display because most of the time I really don't need it that retina murderously bright. As you can see here, since it's full of Windows, we've got our desktop over here. Anything that you can put on a Windows 7 machine, you can run on this. That means Photoshop, your CAD app if you want, though I really don't recommend HD 4000 graphics if you can help it to do something like CAD, but full desktop experience right here. In terms of benchmarks, first you can see how it does on the Windows Experience Score Processor 7.0 for our Core i5, 1.8 GHz dual core. Memory 7.4, that's good, it shows us dual channel. It has two DIMM slots, by the way, 8 gigs of RAM pre-installed in this. 5.5 for desktop graphics performance, that's about what we expect to see from the Intel HD 4000 with, with dual channel memory. 6.4 for gaming graphics, 5.9 for primary hard disk because it's measuring the 500 gig conventional hard drive inside. On PC Mark 
seven. It scored 39.54. That's not bad. We see mid 4,000s often on Ultrabooks that have complete solid state drive, but since this guy has a conventional hard drive, that's going to slow it down. If we take a look at our computer, you can see right here, here's our 500 gig hard drive showing up. And we don't see the SSD because it's used as a caching SSD by the operating system. Caches operating system files, frequently launched applications, that kind of thing. So you don't actually have access to that. Dell has not cluttered this up with too much bloatware, which is nice. And we've got all the standard Windows 8 Metro Live Tile stuff right here. A couple of fun things like air hockey. When something is this big and it supports 10 points of multi-touch, you actually can sort of play a virtual air hockey on here. And the rest of that's just your standard Windows applications, including IE here. You get both versions, as always, the desktop version and the full screen Metro version of it. So really nice, easy on the eye, sharp, good looking stuff here. Fonts are just handled very nicely. But how about if we go to the desktop, where IE can be a problem. Right now we're at 100% font zooming, which is perfectly fine, because this is a big display. Still very easy to see, no problems there whatsoever. Touch is very responsive. We can pinch zoom. We can make things really large, so it's easy on the eyes. 1080p is certainly a good resolution for this display, and it is a great looking display. For those of you who don't want to use the hardware keyboard, so you've carried it to another room, you got the on screen keyboard with Windows, that's a given. You get auditory feedback with that. And here we are on our website right now. Let's take a look at a YouTube video just to see what it's like. We're going to look at the Acer Aspire R7, a pretty adventurous convertible Windows machine. See that video review? See, color saturation is really nice on this, and the fonts are good and sharp. Very pleasant. And the touch is working just great, too. And it's bloody loud. This is Tai Chi, if you remember that. This that is 50% that that volume. It's loud. Of the display panel. This one sticks with one, and in some ways it's a lot more practical because this is less heavy. You don't have two displays going on over here. Less expensive great. manufacturer. Great. Actually, as great well. streaming. And Looks nice. And you're using it like this, and somebody says, Oh, what are you looking at? So, obviously, streaming video works just fine on this. And you get that big screen experience, which is very enjoyable. So, all in all, the XPS 18 is a very interesting concept. It's your all in one here. You can do Skype, you've got the webcam right up there, everything Windows can do. Comfortable, easy to use, nice touch screen, great colors, wide viewing angles, but you can pick it up and take it with you too. And at five pounds, it's really not a burden. Obviously, Dell intends you to pick this up and move it from room to room in your home or in your office and probably not put it in a bag, though they did include a mobile edge kind of laptop style bag in case you actually do want to carry it someplace else to your friend's house or whatever and use it there. You could do that, but at five pounds and at 18.4 inches diagonal, clearly it, it's more of your in-home or in-office PC and not your road warrior buddy. Yes, it does have an accelerometer. You could use this in portrait mode. God knows. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you would want to. It's not something that you're going to hold in a book kind of position to read from, but you could. But nonetheless, it's versatile in every way. It bridges two worlds well. It feels like the future to me, where we've got our desktop PC and we've got something you can actually take around and enjoy all sorts of media on and do a variety of things with just by picking up and carrying around since all the brains are in here. Which makes it different from some of the competitors. Obviously the, the Sony Tap 20 is twice as heavy so there's that. It's not really meant to be as portable as this. I'm sure you can lug it from room to room but this guy you really could take out, out of the house with you if you wanted. Then there's the ASUS AIO which is an interesting device but in the base you have your Windows computer and in the tablet what you have is a Tegra 3 and it runs Android remotely. You can use Splashtop on that to actually run Windows but that's a different kind of experience there. It's not full Windows with you really right here everything all the brains are inside so different concept there though it's actually a fairly portable device. They have different philosophies of how you're going to get your work done. And lastly Samsung has some nice all-in-ones too. Those are really not intended to be moved around. Those are the heaviest of all lovely machines, but it doesn't offer this kind of portability. So among the portables, which would be the TAP20 and the ASUS AIO, I'd have to say this is definitely by far the most portable and the most powerful for somebody who's looking for their Windows experience to really go with them instead of running Android and then a splash top remote connection to your base. 
So that's the Dell XPS 18. I, I have to say I really do like it. If you're looking for an all-in-one PC and you don't need massive computing power and you don't want to play games, but you want something that you could actually pick up, take to another room, use in place of a TV, really, at 18.4 inches with a full HD display, you can watch your Netflix, your Amazon Prime videos, whatever you want on this. It's pretty darn cool. Not bad price either. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to hit that like button.